Okay, we're going to revisit the Venn diagram worksheet we looked at back in Module 1. We had a clinical study of a new non-drowsy prescription medication for allergy relief that was tested on 500 patients, and we had a list of different adverse effects of the drug and how many people experienced them. And then we created this Venn diagram of all the different side effects and combinations of side effects and what people experienced. We knew there were 500 total patients. Each one of these circles represents a different side effect. For instance, this one represents those with sore throat. Five people experienced just a sore throat. Two people experienced sore throat and being thirsty. Four people experienced just being thirsty, etc. So if you have this back in your notes, you probably want to pull this out at this time to reference for the rest of this um, worksheet because what we're going to do is work on the other side of the worksheet or the next page where we're asked to calculate a bunch of different probabilities and or odds statements. So if you turn there now, we see the instructions are to use your Venn diagram on the front together with any probability formulas needed to calculate the following probabilities and odds. And the first statement says what's the probability of experiencing a headache? go back and consult our Venn diagram. Looking for the headache circle, it's this circle right here. Now, if you're in any region that's covered by that circle, you experienced a headache. So we have a total of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 people experienced a headache out of the total possible, which was 500. So this is 15 out of 500 which will reduce to 3 out of 100. You should always reduce your probability statements and your odd statements as far as possible. Um, it's, it's typical to leave them in lowest fractional form, so 3 out of 100 chance of experiencing a headache. You could also change it to a decimal, 0 0.03, or to a percentage, 3%. All three of these statements uh, tell the same probability, just in a different format. But uh, I'm going to prefer that you leave it in reduced fraction form. So if at all possible, you want to go to that form. Well, problem two says, what's the probability of experiencing only a headache? So only a headache, we'd be looking on here to this one person right here. All he had was a headache. All the other people who had headaches also experienced some other type of side effect. So there is only one person out of the 500 patients that experienced only a headache. Probability of not experiencing a dry mouth. If we go back to our chart, looking for dry mouth, we have this circle right here. We add up the numbers inside the circle. We get 10. So 10 people experienced a dry mouth, but we want to know did not experience a dry mouth. So that's always 1 minus the probability of it happening. So the probability of something not happening is 1 minus the probability of it happening. So 1 minus 10 over 500 is 490 over 500, which reduces to 49 out of 50. So 49 out of every 50 people who took this drug did not experience dry mouth. The next problem we get is odds. It says odds in favor of experiencing dizziness. Now odds in favor is the probability of a success, which in this case is experiencing dizziness, divided by the probability of a failure, which would be not experiencing dizziness. So if we go back to our Venn diagram, looking for dizziness, which is down here, there are 7, 10, 13 people who experience dizziness. So the probability of experiencing it is 13 out of 500. And then the probability of not experiencing it must then be 487 out of 500. If 13 people did experience it, 487 didn't. And so this fraction divided by this fraction gives us 13 over 487. And then odd statements are written with a colon. So 13 colon. 487, or 13 to 487 are the odds in favor of experiencing dizziness. Odds against is worked the other way. It's probability of a failure divided by probability of its success. So back to our Venn diagram, looking for 
drowsiness, which is going to be over here for drowsy. There were seven people who were drowsy. So if there were seven people who were drowsy, there were 493 out of 500 that weren't, and seven out of 500 that were. So you get 493 divided by seven, which becomes the odd statement 493 to seven. Odds against experiencing nausea, again referring to your chart, there are 15 people who do experience nausea, which means there's 485 out of 500 that don't, and 15 out of 500 that do, so 485 over 15, which reduces to 97 over 3, which becomes the odd statement 97 to 3. probability of experiencing nervousness and nausea. So you're going back to your Venn diagram. Nervousness is this circle. Nausea is this circle. You want both, so you want the intersection. Three and one. Four people had both. So this is probability. So four out of 500, which will reduce to one out of 125. Now, if you go to problem eight, experiencing nervousness or nausea, we're now looking for if you're in either circle anywhere. So all of the nervousness circle, all of the nausea circle, but make sure you don't count things twice. So two plus three plus four is nine, and five more is 14, 15, 20, 31. So 31 people experienced one or the other, so it's 31 out of 500 and that fraction will not reduce. Problem nine, what's the probability of experiencing a headache and drowsiness? So we're looking for intersection between headache and drowsiness because it had the word and. Well, there's not any intersection. So therefore, nobody experienced that. So you have a zero out of 500 or just zero probability of experiencing both of those. Now everything we're calculating here, I'll just pause for a second, everything we're calculating here is empirical probability. It's not mathematical prob uh, excuse me, it's not theoretical probability. Because we're basing all these probabilities off what has happened. And so we're not coming up with some mathematical likelihood like you would with theoretical probability. We're just basing off our experiment what has happened, we're predicting what will happen. So this zero probability of experiencing a headache and drowsiness doesn't mean it's not possible that you might experience those. It's just that it's never happened in any of the test case patients that somebody has experienced both a headache and drowsiness at the same time, or has experienced both adverse effects while taking the drug. It has yet to happen yet. Doesn't mean it won't happen, just means it has not happened as of yet. Okay, then we have the probability of experiencing a headache or drowsiness. So this is a, a union statement again. So we get everybody in drowsy as well as everybody in headache. That's 22 people if you add up all those numbers. So it's 22 out of 500, which will reduce to 11 out of 250. Odds in favor of experiencing an adverse effect. Odds in favor, so that's probability of a success divided by probability of a failure. So if you're anywhere in any circle, you have experienced an adverse effect. Well, we know that there were 411 people who didn't, which means there must be 89 people who did experience an adverse effect. So 89 out of 500 divided by 411 out of 500 is 89 over 411, which becomes the odd statement, 89 to 411 are your odds in favor of experiencing an adverse effect. Then problem 12 asks for odds against experiencing an adverse effect. Well, if you already know the odds in favor, calculating the odds against is incredibly easy because all you do is reverse the position. So it's 411 to 89. Anytime you're calculating odds against and then odds in favor, or odds in favor and then odds against. All you need to do is flip the position of the two numbers. That's it. That's all you have to do. 13. Probability of experiencing a headache and fatigue and dry mouth. 
Okay, back to my Venn diagram, looking for headache, fatigue, and dry mouth. I need a triple intersection point of those three, and it doesn't happen. You've got fatigue and headache, you've got dry mouth and headache, but there's no overlap between dry mouth and fatigue. So according to past experimentation results, it is not possible as of yet to experience all three of those. So we have zero out of 500 or just zero. Problem 14, what's the probability of experiencing a headache or fatigue or dry mouth? Now we've switched to union. Add up everything in fatigue, headache, and dry mouth. So it's 15 inside the headache plus eight more is 23 plus six more is 29. So 29 out of 500. 15, probability of experiencing nervousness and nausea and dizziness. Again, you're looking for a triple intersection point of those three. If you look for that on your Venn diagram, you'll find there is one person in that category, so one out of 500. Probability of experiencing nervousness or nausea or dizziness, that's a triple union of those three sets. You add up all the numbers in those circles and you get 38 out of 500, which reduces to 19 out of 250. 17, what are the odds against experiencing a sore throat and thirst? Sore throat, thirst, there's two people that experience them both. So two out of 500 experienced it. But if we're doing odds against, it's probability of a failure first. Failure would be those who don't experience both of them. So if there's 400 and 98 out of 500 people who don't experience both of them, and there's only two out of the 500 that do. So that becomes 498 over two, or 249 over one, which becomes the odd statement, 249 to one, are your odds against experiencing both sore throat and thirst. Yeah, so pretty unlikely. 18, odds in favor of experiencing nervousness or nausea. Add the two circles together, see how many total people are in it. Since it's odds in favor, there are 31 people included in both circles. So 31 out of 500 experience one or the other, which means that 469 out of 500 do not. That becomes 31 over 469, switching to odds 31 to 469. 19. Odds against experiencing anorexia and fatigue. Here's anorexia, here's fatigue, nobody experienced both of them. So since it's odds against, we have failure. 500 out of 500 did not. To success, 0 out of 500, which becomes 500 over 0, which really is the same as 1 over 0. Um, which is undefined if you know your fractional rules, but as an odd statement, we're going to just call it 1 to 0, which basically means it won't happen. It has not happened yet, so your odds against it happening are 1 to 0, meaning it won't happen. And lastly, problem 20, what's the probability of not experiencing anorexia and fatigue? Well, from the last problem, we know that that zero out of the 500 people did experience both of them, which meant that 500 out of 500 did not experience both of them, and we get the probability of statement of one. Which again, does not mean that that will always continue to be the case, it's just that since this is empirical probability up to this point, everybody has had the case of not experiencing both anorexia and fatigue, or another way to say that is nobody has had both of them up to this point. And so there you have the completion of the probability worksheet. Remember to reduce your fractions in lowest form and make sure your odd statements involve colons. They're not left as fractions, change them to colons. Odds in favor is probability of success divided by probability of failure odds against is probability of failure divided by probability of success, and they are always the reciprocal odds statement to each other.